got your eye on another farm. Would you, is there a place you'd buy Bitcoin to try to, to make the money? What, what, at what level would you re-enter since you, you're not sure whether it's a good idea with what the Chinese are doing? Is there a place you'd re-enter to try to fund another farm purchase? Well, I, I think that you need to see uh, some people who love it break ranks. I, I have not heard a person who loves it who loves it less. And I think that you and I both know that you, the bottom comes when people say, you know what, I've had it. And I've not heard that at all. Uh, so I'm kind of, let's, let's wait to see some people give it up. All and right. by the way, I know Mike, Mike said that, there, that he doesn't see a lot of margin buying, but I think it's really in China. I think the Chinese are very worried. They don't want billionaires in America to control a, a rival currency to their own. And the Chinese are not like us. They can shut it down. So I, I think that it's it, too early. Too early. I, I got that farm. It's really well, nice. Would you I, go back in? Would you go back if you could get it? I where like you got Ethereum it the first time? right now. I like oh, Ethereum don't? more than Bitcoin. I would go back in. Yes, I would go back yeah. in if I get it back to ten thousand, eleven thousand, uh, twelve thousand, where I bought a lot. Yeah, I go back in. I don't mind that. I, I right. just wanted to see to go lower. I, I love their conviction, but I think someone has to break ranks. Hey, hey Mike, what you mentioned about. Uh, Bitcoin competing with gold. We were talking earlier about how gold has had its worst first half performance since 2013. You think that's why? Because anybody who would have bought into gold during this maybe was buying Bitcoin. So, you know, you may be seeing it. You know, listen, now, I, think, but. I think part of this is cyclical, right? We're coming out of the COVID era. Everyone got jabbed. The economy is booming. Powell's talking about maybe having to taper early. And so, listen, if the economy really comes back, and we're raising rates, the store of value inflation, you know, fear argument gets toned down. And so lots of the excess speculation uh, uh, will will come off the burner, right? And uh, so, like I've always said, I've always hedged my crypto portfolio with a big short, you know, five-year position. Um, we'll Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. Now we have CNBC has flipped the switch on Bitcoin and crypto. We have Jim Cramer stating that he will enter back into Bitcoin when it's 11 or 12,000. And he likes Ethereum better. But guys, we know who's working behind the scene. That's right, Bitcoin Lightning. So we know Bitcoin is not going anywhere. We know that stocks and cryptos got pumped by the Fed. We know that 20% of all money in existence got printed in 2020. Balance sheet is at $8 trillion. The only way you can actually combat inflation is through raising interest rates. They can raise interest rates on an $8 trillion balance sheet. So stocks and cryptos are going to come down. You definitely want your bag to hodl, but then you also want to trade. I'm not your financial advice, not financial advice, but please do your own research. We're definitely going to have pumps and dumps. In this bear market, guys, they're going to pull this money out so they can build the fourth industrial revolution. Now we have Mike Novogratz. Doesn't state he has a partnership with Goldman Sachs to provide liquidity for their Bitcoin futures. So just like the ransom guys, Russia is to blame. When it comes to Bitcoin, price dropping is China. Remember, guys, they build up the narratives. But what Novogratz said, I love. He said, Crypto is global because we know this is part of the New World Order's plan. Once we move over to this digital economy, the New World Order is going to have the all CNI. China is being set up as a new boogeyman, the totalitarian state. But their people are coming out of poverty, going to the middle class or even rich. The United States, what happened? All the small businesses closed. The big corporations are going to bring the Americans to their knees, which the United States Babylon is going to fall. Now, when it comes to cryptos, they're definitely going to fall, guys. We know regulation is going to come. Gary Gensler is not there for any reason. He's there to bring us down to that 1%. And then that 1% is going to rise. We have already seen this movie during the tech boom. We had all these tech companies and now we only have a few. And the same thing is going to happen in cryptos. Because we know when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. Y'all have a wonderful day.
Just technically, in, in past breaks, we've seen a pullback of much greater than 50% from the highs, which is approximately where we are right now. You don't think that's in the cards this time around? Like when we saw it, it was at 20 and it went back to, to you know, three or four. Whatever. Three. You, you don't see, you don't see, you don't see I, I a don't, similar, is it possible? The ecosystem is, the ecosystem is so much more mature. Uh, the amount of players that are moving in are so much more mature. Uh, every single bank is working on their own crypto project, uh, how they're going to get Bitcoin to their wealth clients. And I think a lot of clients that get it buy it the first time will see this as an opportunity to finally get involved. Well, Mike, okay, back to fundamentals. Um, we've, it's been pointed out that you can only mine a certain amount anyway, so it doesn't matter who it is. If China's not mining, it doesn't matter. But there was still a lot of, of interest in China among, among the Chinese people and a lot of... of crypto trading, and even when they had to go to peer-to-peer -peer or over-the-counter, whatever you want to call it, not from an exchange, that was still going on. And that's a big part, you know, you're talking about a billion people or whatever. I mean, that's an important market for crypto. And yeah, so 100%. This, Listen, and, and and why now we're if, down 25% in the last week is because right, prices are set on the margin. When you start thinking you're going to take a chunk of your buyers out of the market, you're going to fall in price. What the Chinese have proven over and over, not just in the crypto era, but the last you know 30 years, if they want their money offshore, they find a way to get it offshore, uh, right? And so I don't think you're going to see Chinese people stopping to participate in crypto. It's going to make it, the, the government's going to make it more difficult, 100%. But Listen, you know, the president of the country sent his, his daughter to Harvard. The last president, his kids all had U.S. passports. Chinese always want to hedge uh, against an authoritarian regime. They don't want all their money in China. And crypto is freedom. And so I think you'll see the Chinese find plenty of ways to own Bitcoin. If crypto is, is freedom, and, and we're talking about the United States being a democracy, how, how do you think the U.S. is ultimately going to regulate Bitcoin? Because clearly they, they are not right now in any in any meaningful way. You now have a number of efforts to put crypto into 401k plans and other things, uh, which I believe ultimately is going to force the hand of regulators to make a decision one way or the other about what that what that regulation ultimately looks like, what that does to private wallets, what that does to how the coin bases of the world or your firms or others or all of the banks that, that, that are trying to build infrastructure around this are going to have to deal with AML or other things to the point arguably, if you were looking on the downside versus the upside, on the downside, that you could actually take away, I would imagine, many of the quote-unquote benefits of a Bitcoin. And so I wonder how you think about that. It's a good question. Listen, I think regulation is going to help us in the long run, right? Right now, the total crypto market cap is less than a trillion and a half dollars, right? This whole system works by it becoming bigger and bigger, right? It's, it's less than 40 basis points of global net worth. And so the only way it becomes 3%, 4%, 5% is to have institutional money participate. And so we are going to get regulation. Gary Gensler is a very smart guy. I trust that his regulation will be smart. Um, my guess is Coinbase has some guardrails put on, put on them within the next 24 months. I don't think that's bad. Most of the players in the U.S., including Galaxy, I'm guessing Coinbase, operate like we're regulated. We are regulated by you know, FinCEN, FINRA, the SEC is a public company. Uh, and are the Canadian version at this point. Uh, and so I don't think it's gonna be as dramatic for the institutional buyers. I think it'll be quite good. Uh, it is certainly gonna change the dynamic of the retail player. The other thing that's interesting about crypto, it's hard because it's a global market, right? We don't have global markets in general. Like crypto is really the first global market where you're building a protocol, not just for the US bond market or the European bond market, but for a global market. And so the U.S. can do what they do with U.S. participants, but it doesn't stop the other participants. So, Mike, I'm listening to you, and, and I do think Gary Gensler uh, understands. And one of the things that, that I think works in your favor is you've got a company called Galaxy Digital that's based on crypto. You've got Coinbase that came out with a huge market cap. You've got, you know, Jack Dorsey and Square and PayPal and, you know, all these vested interests in, in the, you know, in the U.S. government not putting the complete kibosh uh, on something like this. But then again, you've got a government 
that its fortunes are so dependent on the dollar being the, you know, the, the currency of choice for, for global trade that I, I think they might have to offset those two concerns. They don't obviously want to want to put a nascent innovative industry out of business, but then again, they've got a vested interest in, in Bitcoin not displacing the dollar, just like well, I, I, I think that's think what the Chinese are doing too. I mean, they, they don't want, uh, like you say, the freedom of, of them not to be able to, to have the currency of choice. Right. I, don't, I don't think people are seeing Bitcoin as replacing the dollar. I think people are seeing Bitcoin as replacing gold as a hedge versus bad monetary and fiscal, as a hedge versus a slow debasement of the currency. And so, you know, Bitcoin as a store of value, I think most regulators are fine with. Uh, when people start talking about it as money uh, and a transactional currency, I think that gets people more nervous. Um, but that's not really Bitcoin's use case at this point. And I do think we're going to have a dollar stable coin to compete with the Chinese stable coin. The big difference is ours will be decentralized and theirs will be centralized. China wants complete control of its economy. And that's becoming more and more clear every passing quarter. We're going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money.